Good evening. Welcome to a special edition of Cinnamon Chat with Amita. And today, it is not our usual Thursday evening talk show because it is the special edition and we have two special guests to participate in our special edition. And usually, you know that I run this talk show on a weekly basis. And today I'm going to take a backstage. Of course, I'll be in the show, but I'll not be talking much because we are going to interview. Actually, a kidpreneur is going to interview a serial entrepreneur. And this is going to be a very interesting topic. And then a special welcome to all my LinkedIn family. And then from Facebook, my uh, a fan base from the Facebook and also whoever has liked uh, Cinnamon Chat with Nethila page also are welcome to the show. And later on, this uh, show will be edited and posted on Cinnamon Chat with Nethila YouTube channel. So let me introduce the first guest and he will introduce the second guest. So the first guest is a 11 year old kid and apparently he is my younger son. And he's the founder of Cinnamon Chat with Nethila YouTube channel. For the moment, it's a YouTube channel, but then from next January or not, it's going to be a startup. And this is how he's building his brand. So let me uh, invite Nethila into the show. Good evening, Nethila. Good evening, Mr. Amita. Thank you very much for being uh, in my show. Now I'm going to stay calm and quiet, and I'm going to hand you over the uh, microphone and the stage. Thank you. So everyone, you already know about me and now I'm going to introduce you to Kamat Silva. First, I'm going to talk a little about him and then we'll bring him to the stage. So Kamat Silva was uh, is a Sri Lankan who migrated to Canada in 2010 and in Canada, he actually lost his job without any warning and then he decided to start his own business with only $700 in his pocket. So it was, uh, he's going to share with us his journey so far, what happened on the way of it. So yeah, let's bring him to the stage. Yeah. So uh, Nethila, you have your questions ready for him, all the questions yes, I'm, and how, yeah, how it will go. Yeah, how it would go is uh, while you are talking, you are, while you are taking the questions from him, I'm also going to bring in uh, some of them where our audience will ask few questions online. So let me uh, take uh, Kamaj onto the screen. Hi, guys. Over Hello. To yeah. Hello, Mr. Kamaj Silva. You don't have to call me Mr. You can call me Kamaj. <laughs> okay, so you're from Canada. So what's the time? What does it look like over there in Canada? Uh, the time right now is 9.05 a.m. So a little bit early for me because I'm not a very early riser unless I have <laughs> something to do. Uh, I don't believe in, you know, when people say you have to wake up at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. I don't believe in that. As long as you get what you have to get done during the day, you're good. Um, Canada right now, well, uh, actually, I, I, I'm from Sri Lanka, but I uh, I live and work in Canada. So I'm kind of like this dual citizen or whatever you call it technically. Uh, but yeah, I'm Sri Lankan. Like I've always been Sri Lankan, never changed uh, wherever I go. Uh, event um yeah so canada is super cold right now we are pretty much like minus seven minus eight right now so it's really cold outside <laughs> okay so now i'm going to begin to ask you <clears throat> yeah sorry about that so now i'm going to ask you my questions so what i really want to ask you right now is did you plan yeah. to do this during your childhood? You know, this entrepreneur stuff and then moving to Canada, all that. Did you plan it during your childhood? Uh, no, Natila, not really, because um, most things 
that happened in my life or my, my journeys everything happens so fast sometimes like my decisions to you know my decision to go to england uh, in 2003 and do my bachelor's that was like not a planned is i'm not i mean i don't except for my businesses and stuff i don't really uh, i've never been like a big planner in life like before like off screen i asked you what did you what, what do you want to do when you grow up right like i didn't have an answer to that question i think like many sri lankan kids um di- during like the time i grew up like in the 80s 90s um we didn't have a lot of options in sri lanka i mean we we did have have a few options you know you can become an engineer lawyer doctor um any any um job category of that sort yes but i think uh, for people who really thought a little bit outside of the box like i i i i realized i was a creative person from um very from from my like younger days but um it, it was pretty limited what i could do like in within the country so you mean you can go into advertising or um stuff like that but it's um honestly i did not have an idea what i wanted to become or um, you know i i didn't plan my life the way it turned out is the best way to say it. okay so you didn't so after you made the decision you were like oh okay i have done this now so you were like you didn't even notice that you made a very important decision is it like that um are you there i'm uh, sorry nadir i think you broke up there could you re- repeat the question yeah i'm here hello oh yeah so uh, what i wanted to say was uh, you didn't actually know you made an important decision you like didn't notice it that much is that what um, you're saying uh, you with my cur- no with my career i think or what i wanted to do when you say did i always want to become an entrepreneur i think um I didn't label it as becoming an entrepreneur. I just followed my passion and I wanted to uh, at, at a certain point in my life I think we're going to talk about this um uh this a little later. Um when I lost my job and when I had to do my own thing, I didn't think of it as becoming an entrepreneur. I think it's it, it just happened. I just uh, followed my passion and I do- wanted to do what I loved. Um so when I started to do, do that I automatically be- became an entrepreneur i think uh so it it wasn't it wasn't pre-planned or anything okay thank you so uh, another question i'd like to ask is uh, whether you had any skills you know when you were younger did you have any skills like you know sports you know those kind of skills mm-hmm. like creativity yeah, sports I, I... you're good in sports like that uh i'm not super good in sports but i played volleyball basketball um did a bit of boxing for about 2 weeks got knocked out and didn't go back <laughs> um but yeah i i i i did sports i was in the interact club uh, i was the president of the interact club in uh, at st thomas's uh, in what is this, 99 or 2000 um but i always knew i was creative i used to you know scribble draw um you know kind of like even on the computer like early adapter of corel draw photoshop um everything i learned myself i didn't go to like any like you know back in the day there were there weren't many like tutorials on the internet or you know you couldn't even access the internet it was like so slow like 56k dial up internet like you guys can't even believe like what we had to go through just to load a web page it was like so difficult right like um now it's so easy uh but no i was always i think i was always creative um and uh, i think anything that i do any business that i start i think it everything starts with um the creative process um and you know the the brand identity um how i'm going to present the brand to the rest of the world how i'm going to introduce it what marketing strategy that i that i'm going to use so everything everything starts there for me everything starts with a honestly to say everything starts with a logo or any, everything starts with the, with a piece of artwork and then i usually develop it like um i released a, a hot sauce very recently in sri lanka um which is a very small oh yeah operation. i heard of that it's just basically bare bones started from scratch and, and i think uh, yeah 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 so everything started with uh 
a, a logo at first uh, or an idea or like a logo it wasn't necessarily designed and put on paper but like i had this image in my head and i wanted to do something about it so so uh, i think uh, everything you did starts it. You just did with it. a creative process with me okay yes. so uh, <laughs> this is uh, this is uh, also an important question this is an important question it's about your job so as soon as you lost it were you like scared did yeah. you think okay i can find a new job or were you like scared that you might not find one what did you feel as soon as you heard you lost it um uh, i was kind of relieved natila to be on last uh boss who i worked under was not a good person uh so i was kind of relieved that i didn't have to you know um go to work the next day so uh, that was feeling number 1 but i don't think i was scared um i think it was more uh more i don't know what to do but it wasn't a scared feeling i i remember at that moment i thought you know this it, it's not that difficult i'm going to kind of figure it out because by that time even in the film industry i had over <laughs> years of experience in the film industry and uh, if i really wanted to get back into film and do it i actually went for a few interviews like i interviewed at sony i interviewed at um, a few other places i think uh, in in the film film in the film and tv industry uh, but but then during all those interviews um, what i felt like was why am i like trying to make this random person believe in my skills and believe in you know i can do the job which i've been doing for over 5 years and you know i've generated so much of revenue for e1 um e1 is the company that i used to work for so we i i used to my my department used to bring in even even is a it is the biggest independent film distributor in uh, in north america and they're based in so if you know the brand peppa pig pj masks all that even makes yeah. them um makes and distributes them um and and you know like i be bringing this much revenue every year to this company and I, like why am i like doing this song and dance with like random people who think you know who don't think i'm good enough to work for them uh, or or like i have to prove to them that i'm not good enough to work or like i'm good enough to work for them um so i'm like no no it's it's a waste of my time and energy so i i'm going to go and do my own thing um and that's how the path uh, to sneak it up was laid out okay so uh this is a very very important question about your current business why did you think about selling shoes can you tell me why shoes no, why not any other product only shoes why uh i I believe in Nathil I believe in whatever you do uh in life in business in you know in in whatever you decide to do in life uh, I believe in doing it with a passion um and my passion is obviously shoes as you can see behind me this is not a showroom this is not a shop this is this is my office this is these are my personal pairs in the back like it's all around um I love shoes I love fashion I love streetwear so um when i wanted to uh go go start up a business uh, i wanted to do it in the media my in, in in the field that i i like so shoes sneakers was the first thing that came into my mind um did some research about the industry uh not a lot of research 2 3 days worth of research and uh, i found the subscription model to be a very exciting new form of um e-commerce uh, subscription commerce is is a part of e-commerce um and there was no one uh doing anything in the space of sneakers no subscription box uh, there was a accessory subscription box but like nothing for like real actual shoes um and i was a huge fan of you know uh, subscription boxes like loot crate uh, nerd block and all, all that stuff uh, and i wanted to kind of bring sneakers and subscription boxes together as as i said before like you always ask me if you ask but i was creative um as a kid 
Uh, I think this is where like that creativity kicked in, and, and I said to myself, you know, there's nothing like this in the world. So uh, there was no guarantee it was going to be, you know, it was going to be a successful business or not. But uh, I, I thought, let me try it out, and uh, let me see what it's going to be like. So uh, started to it up. That's, that's how everything started. <laughs> Okay, so the next question is also an important question yeah. from it you. So, do in Canada do kids do part time work? You know, part time work like open up lemonade stands and stuff like that. Part time work. Yeah, a lot of kids do. Netila, I think the problem, uh, right? Like in Sri Lanka, especially the. The issue that I see where kids don't go into part-time work or kids don't work at restaurant chains like Burger King or McDonald's because we think that it's demeaning or it's like, you know, it's it's not good for your stature or it's not good for your social standing when, like, especially parents, right? Like, they don't want to send in their kid to, you know, work at McDonald's because like, oh, like their neighbor might see, like, why are you hard up for money? You're sending kids to um, work at McDonald's. But I don't think... I don't think that's correct or that's that's the right way to go about it because um, starting early or doing a part-time job early helps a lot in building your character uh, and also helps you navigate life better in um, in in the future. Like for me, honestly, um, when I went to England in 2003, I was, you know, I didn't, everything was done for me at home and I didn't know how to like navigate life and it's like, I'm dropped on this strange land. Now I had to like kind of figure out like what I have to do, get a part-time job and everything. So that 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 built my character, like doing a part-time job. And I was like 19 or 20 at the time. So not a 14, 15 year old kid. But um, I think every 14, 15 year old kid should do part-time work if, you know, if their parents allow them to do that, obviously, because it helps you build character. It, it, it teaches you things for later in life and it helps you become independent. Otherwise, you're going to be 40 and sitting at home eating what your mom's going to cook you. So that's not that's not the right way to go about it, right? So I think um, I think don't think about stature. Don't think about, you know, don't think, honestly, don't think about what other people are going to say or don't care about what other people are going to say. Your neighbor can say you're like hard up for money. That's why you're, you're sending your kids to work at McDonald's. But that's, that's not the... It's 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 the mentality that we've been developing for the past 50, 60, 100 years that, you know, part, part-time work is bad um, or part-time work is not a respect, you know, it's not a respectable job. It's, uh, you know, you have to wear a tie and go to work and that's where, you know, that's where all the respect comes from. So, you know, um, you, obviously your dad knows like when you wear a tie and when you go to like, a bank or whatever they like treat you nice but if you wear a t-shirt and jeans this happens to me all the time because i don't wear ties unless it's a wedding um because i'm in street where i don't have to i don't have to wear a collared shirt and you know dress pants and i'm honestly i'm uncomfortable in that that's why i'm not working in an office in in canada anyway um i think a lot of places have relaxed um dress codes um, you don't have to wear your you know typical workwear uh, especially in like the creative industry and film and stuff like that but yeah i think it's really important for children to start early um work early uh, or at least get a taste of it so a lot of kids are very entrepreneurial in canada uh you see in the summer you see not obviously this summer because of covid but um um you know previous summers you will see kids with lemonade stands um you know kids rake leaves in the fall uh, in winter they clean snow um you know they um they do paper routes but what they call paper routes is like you know you, they distribute like papers from home to home uh, and they they earn money yeah a lot of kids are entrepreneurial it's it's i think it goes beyond money i think it builds character okay so now your business is about sneakers and shoes, right? Okay, so what's the name of it? Um, sneakertub.com is one of the dot .com and dot .ca. Uh, dot .com is the global site and dot .ca is the Canadian one. Uh, so that's one of the businesses that uh, I own. Uh, another one is Milk Toronto. Uh, Milk Toronto is a retail space uh, in Canada, which is 
obviously because of covid we are closed right now um it's it's more more like a typical retail store but with a twist we are milk and cereal themed and everything in the store is milk and cereal themed and our inventory expires every 30 to 45 days it's just like how milk expires um so that's the first idea i got uh, how i developed the idea um but, but because i i decided to name the store milk uh because i wanted to one i wanted to stand out there's no you know retail store called milk and then um that's where the creativity came in and then when we built a concept around milk you know we we made sure that every 30 or 45 days our uh, our inventory expires so people have like a countdown or a few days to kind of purchase it uh but it's uh, milk has turned more into a brand of its own right now we we do collaborations with uh, big companies like new era we release uh, limited edition hats and it's taken it's it's a beast of its own okay so that's why you chose a very strange name like milk yes uh because uh one uh in toronto so in 2019 we were we were named the best new retail fashion store in toronto by blog to blog to is one of the biggest publications in uh, in toronto um and uh we were honored by the city council if i'm not mistaken the toronto city council the uh, the councillor uh visited the store gave us a plaque and you know all that jazz um and we got a lot of press because the store was called milk and it was something different um to the sneaker world to the fashion world to toronto there was no concept retail stores in toronto uh when we when we started milk so that's why we chose a strange name um strange things bring strange results okay so that is why i've really been wondering why you did it <laughs> yeah there is i didn't a... understand what what yeah, the why what's the meaning of it yeah, milk there's a, there's, there's a method to the madness <laughs> okay so uh, did you have any mentors on the way on this entrepreneurial journey any mentors who taught you uh honestly nothing i know uh no one in uh, person but i i consume a lot of uh, entrepreneurial media um uh, i'm a big fan of gary v um follow mark cuban's journey quite closely um richard branson is an inspiration so not no no one i would like talk to and get advice but um i would watch content and kind of get something from it um i think that's so if you say i had a mentor i can say it's gary v i don't know if you have ch- checked out gary v if you haven't you should um no i haven't if if uh, if 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 i had a mentor i think it has to be gary v but he doesn't even know about it <laughs> okay uh thank you very much up to this point we have consumed about uh, maybe close to 25 minutes this is uh, an announcement to the fans who are watching If you think you want to ask a question from Kamaj uh, you could actually ask and I will pull it to the screen and Nethila will ask it from Kamaj on yeah. behalf of on behalf of the audience so I will hand over the stage back to two of you and move out good luck Okay so uh, yeah let's continue So um What is a subscription box? Um so the basic definition of a subscription box is a customer pays uh, a fee uh every month or you can say you know you don't have to do it every month but for 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 explanation sake let's say every month. Um the customer pays a subscription fee every month for a company to curate and put together a certain package for them and they get it on a monthly basis delivered to their house so um how it differs from other forms of e-commerce is a subscription fee that you pay monthly to um to your um to the business or to to to, uh, to the organization or to the establishment Okay so what kind of skills do you think should Sri Lankan kids learn for the future 
you know, what kind of skills should Sri Lankan kids be this learning very, by now? Very, 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 very broad question that will go into hours and hours of uh, hours and hours of discussion um, into it. Um, I, I think uh, before anything, before entrepreneurial skills, before you know, business skills, anything, I think um, respect is something everyone should learn because you know i i do a lot of work with sri lanka i mean i you know i still have a very close connection to sri lanka and i see a lot of schools this is you know if any principals or any wardens or if, if anyone's listening this is i mean it's not easy to change education legislation like overnight obviously but i see a lot of kids like their time is like they go to piano class, they go to swimming, they go to tuition, they go to this and that. Like when, when you start at seven o'clock, when the kid comes home at eight, they're tired. Uh, when I was growing up, it wasn't that bad. We did have tuition and we have we did have all those stuff. So like, especially to kids and even parents, I'm, uh, uh, like my advice is like, let your kids breathe. The kids, little kids, um, you can, uh, you can learn, you, you know, you're so young, you're like eight years old, you're nine years old, you're 10 years old. You have a whole lifetime ahead of you to, you know, if you wanted to learn swimming, you have what, 50, 60 years like left in you to learn swimming. So don't pressurize your kids to do what they kind of don't like. But 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 for kids, my advice is to, you know, live live your childhood. Like childhood, it doesn't come back again and it's it, it will never come back again. Um, so live your childhood uh, before thinking about entrepreneurial skills, before thinking about everything, just finish your education. Um, if like you, like, you know, you, if you're naturally interested in um, uh, in business or if you're natural, if you're a natural born entrepreneur and if you want to do something, this is this is a great platform. LinkedIn's a great platform. Facebook's a great platform. Um, that's what kids should, uh, you know, use their time on social media. Um, uh, excuse me, uh, sorry to, uh, to yeah, uh, Mr. Kamat. Yeah, uh, sorry to interrupt, yeah. but uh, we have a question from the audience from Ramusha Damaratna. So the question is, how yeah. hard or easy is it to start a business in Canada? Okay, Ramusha. So uh, it's I'm going through this right now because I'm I just literally just started a business in Sri Lanka. I would say compared to Sri Lanka, it is so easy. If you want to register a corporation, it takes only half an hour. Uh, if you want to open up a payment gateway, it takes literally two minutes. You link your bank account. It's it's so much easier than Sri Lanka. Uh, Sri Lanka, there's there's so many things that you have to do to even get a payment gateway. You have to have a um, an account from Sampad Bank, you have to not plugging in any brands, but you know, uh, if you want a payment gateway, it has to be Sampad Bank because they have the authority, they, they only have the authority to open a payment gateway. Um, then to register your business, it's really difficult to do it online. You have to go in person, you have to get this certificate. It's, it's so difficult to start a business in Sri Lanka, but I think in Canada, it's pretty easy to start a business. You don't have to register your business if, uh, you know, if you're, um, if you're not, uh, you know, paying, uh, or if you're not collecting taxes, or if you're not doing sales for above thirty thousand, you don't even need a business registration. You. Uh, hello, are you still there? Um. No problem, Nathil. I think uh, maybe it's it's a long distance uh, call. Obviously, the network quality matters. That's why uh, uh, you are on a different uh, Wi-Fi and I'm on a uh, Kamaj. Uh, okay, I think we briefly lost him. Uh, it's all right. So, uh, till he comes back, let me see that I have... Uh, uh, so, so far, uh, we have been doing great. We have asked some great questions. We will try to uh, uh, entertain as much as uh, possible number of questions, but we also have to keep in mind uh, Nethila is uh, trying to, I think uh, we, okay, I think we got Kamaj back. I, uh, Kamaj, we lost you briefly and we, we got you back. Something's going on <laughs> with the connection. 
<laughs> yeah. Do you have any other devices connected onto your uh, network at uh, at your office? Is it a shared uh, connection? I think we, we lost him again. Yeah, he should uh, probably check that. Let's see whether he could come back again. So, uh, as I was telling, uh, we have uh, lots of questions ready for Kamaj. So, we will try at, as much as possible to entertain uh, questions from the audience. But uh, in the meantime, okay. I'm back. Kamaj. <laughs> no, I, Kamaj, I was asking whether you have any other devices connected to the same Wi Fi at office? No? No, 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 nothing connected right now. I think my dog toppled over the uh, router. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he uh, he likes to, uh, he has this uh, little ball that he plays with and he kicks it. So sometimes it goes onto my mail. You can hear the noise now. He's down. Yeah, yeah, we can hear them. Is, is it yeah. possible to say hi um, to your dog? <laughs> yeah, you can. He's a big dog. Roma, come here. He went back up. He's a he's a he's a great Dane and a lab mix, so he's like a huge dog. And when he topples over the router, you know it's going to go out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Netina, uh, let's take a few questions from the audience. We have Gayan, Gayan, who is asking really great discussion. Uh, got a question? What is Kamaj Business's website? And what uh, was yeah. his initial investment, please? Initial investment was seven hundred dollars. That's it. Um, we've uh, seven hundred dollars for about five years ago, um, and I think our valuation right now is a little over five million. Uh, when we when I checked last time, um, business website is sneakertub.com and sneakertub.ca. Uh, uh, .com's global. .ca is uh, the Canadian counterpart. Um, and uh, milktoronto.com is the uh, other address, uh, which is for the retail store. All right. Uh, and then Jihan says, maybe he's a friend of yours, proud of you, Kamaj. All the very best for your future endeavors. Thanks, Nathila, too. I think we have Thank a you, quite lengthy uh, question, but then I'll take it, Nathila. On behalf of you, I'll ask the questions because it's, it's, it's a paragraph. <laughs> What would be the greatest? This is from Kishore. What would be the greatest challenges you faced since you started your business? And on the Dragon State, you shared that you approached certain brands. How did you approach them? What is the strategy? What was the strategy to access their support? Maybe, maybe you can. It's a loaded question. Yeah. So I think the greatest uh, challenge is definitely getting people to take me serious. Uh, people in the industry, people in the footwear industry. Uh, one, I uh, am new to the industry. Um, and two, I'm doing something very different from other people uh, ever did, uh, which is a subscription model for sneakers that is unheard of. Uh, although Nike started doing it now, um, I think they seized uh, operations of the subscription box a couple of months ago. All December is their last month. Um, and also, because uh, of uh, my background, it's uh, I, I mean, I'm I'm not, uh, you know, reluctant to say that um, uh, black or brown entrepreneurs in certain industries face certain challenges. It's, it's known in the footwear industry. Um, all these big brands use. Uh, just give me one second. My dog's going nuts. Every time I do an interview, <laughs> it's like he knows I'm doing something important and he wants to interrupt. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think I think so, yeah that that was also one of the main challenges that I had to face. That uh, you know, being from a different background, uh, getting into the footwear industry where it's typically um, a very Caucasian-driven industry. Like I, I can give you an example. Um, where there is this brand called Asics, which we still don't have. Um, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to um, be direct with Asics. 
Um, so I reached out to the sales rep over email. Obviously, over email, you don't you know you don't hear an accent, you don't see who the person is, whatever. Um, did the credit app? Everything got approved. Uh, the account got approved, and so the guy wanted me to come in for uh, a meeting in Toronto uh, for, for for a buyer's meeting. Went in. Um, the first thing when he saw me, you, you know, like a light bulb or like some switch flipped when he saw me. He's like, oh, like I, I could like read it on his face. Oh, this guy's brown or whatever, right? Uh, a lengthy a half an hour meeting probably ended in like 10 minutes. Um, on my way home, I checked my email and the guy says, uh, sorry, your account is not. Is he there? I can't actually hear him. Yeah, I think <clears throat> the dog is playing havoc, Nethile. Come on, your, your dog is uh, playing with it with, <laughs> with your Wi-Fi, I guess. <laughs> Come on, are you there? Can you hear us? Oh, he's uh, coming back. Yeah, so until it, uh, we'll wait till he comes. And uh, uh, Niroza says, good going, Netila. A lot of comments. So until Kamaj comes, uh, maybe we can prepare for <coughs> few more questions. I think, yeah. I think we got him back. Yeah, Kamaj. Um... Can he hear us? Yeah, it looks okay, like. Please. Can you hear us? Uh, yeah, come on, geez. Okay, he's yeah, there. He's back. He's back. So, Nathila, maybe you can uh, throw the next question. Yeah. Uh, are you there? I think we uh, probably got a got a good, good enough answer for that right like challenges yeah yeah a lot of challenges yeah yeah one example we got the answer. okay uh, so uh, Amaj, uh i have a very important question uh, so today when i when i was going through linkedin i got a message from one of my connections and uh, he uh, she wanted to know something very important about from successful people mm. uh, she wanted to know about how you manage your time time management very good question i am not the best of time best at time management so i can't honestly give you advice on time management but uh, uh i i wish i could i'm not a very organized person i'm thoroughly disorganized everything's in my head and uh, i wish i could manage my time more but i can't give you uh an answer to that question it's for me like the only thing i can say is like make sure you know <laughs> what you're doing at whatever time but there are things that i miss all the time so um to be honest with you i'm not the best time manager so i can't answer that question and give you uh, a, a solid answer for that because I'm, my time management is horrible yeah okay but it's hard to say that your hard time management is all uh, really awful because you seem like you're doing okay with everything Uh, did you uh, did you get that? Hello, Mr. Kamaj. Are you still there? Yeah, Nadil, I think uh, our network is uh, <clears throat> not helping us. But uh, as you very correctly said, this is uh, to answer that question. Even though he thinks that he's horrible in managing his time, uh, we were able to get connected. He, I, I had to send him a, a calendar request. Uh, oh, he's back. He's back. Guys, you yeah, know what? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to switch to my uh, phone because I can. It's um, sure, sure. Wi Fi is slow. I'm just going to uh, switch to my phone. I'm going to get out of it. Sure. Okay, he's coming. I guess, yeah, I think this is much better because uh, for some reason, uh, Max have. 
very horrible uh, Wi-Fi range or the, the signal is like terrible. Sorry about Okay, that. so uh, I was actually answering on behalf of you, Kamaj. Ah. Yeah. I had to send, send uh, Kamaj a calendar request. He booked the time. So uh, we were exchanging emails and mm-hmm. messages with regard to this, uh, this project. So yeah. in my opinion, you are way ahead than most of Sri Lankans in terms of managing your time. <laughs> that much I yeah, it's kind yeah. of hard to say that you're horrible at time management because you are you look like you're doing really good. I mean, I try, but uh, I don't think I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm at a level where I can, you know, give people advice and say, this is how you manage your time. Uh, but I mean, I get by, I get everything I need to get done on time. Okay, yeah. So, uh, what are your future plans? Uh, Nathila, I have an exit strategy for Sneaker Tub, uh, where you know to grow it at uh, to a certain number, and then um, definitely partner with a bigger company for because right now everything that I've been doing is you know I only have one partner, um, and majority of the shares are um, in my possession, so. Um, there is a limit I can grow it uh, and then after that uh, someone bigger uh, should partner with me if you want to take it to the next level so so right now um, like you know for an example like an Amazon or a Foot Locker or you know one of those big companies um, because what I believe is with every business you need an exit strategy and you need to um, you need to see where your business uh, ends up or should be an end goal for the business. So that, that is my end goal for the business. But yeah, grow it as much as possible right now uh, and, uh, you know, do something productive for society, honestly. Yeah, okay. This is the little ball I was talking about, you know, with my dog. He's broken uh. it. Somebody want to come here and say hi? Come. Come. No, he's not coming. Come. Sorry for the interruption, guys. Here, here he is. Oh, okay. That's him. He's going. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so nice dog. <laughs> Thank you. So the next question, it's uh, it's about recruiting kids. So if it's okay, if it's all right illegally, will you recruit kids for your business? You know, for working. I mean, definitely, if it if it if it's allowed legally, I don't see a I don't see a problem. If it's allowed legally and if they're paid, uh, you know, a proper wage or you know the the, the actual going rate uh, or the minimum wage, uh, I don't I, I don't see a problem. I don't think uh, you know kids are more capable of handling certain things better than adults, and uh, you know there is no reason why you shouldn't hire kids if it's legally allowed. Okay, so uh, what is the importance of branding? Uh, I think branding is everything, Nathila. Uh, it's how a consumer sees your brand. Uh, it's how a consumer falls in love with your brand. It's how a consumer decides whether to uh, use or not use your brand. So for me, branding is everything. Every business that I do, uh, everything starts with branding. And I think it is the most, if not the product after the product it's probably the most important thing um it's how you present yourself to the world and branding is super important and a lot of products um, don't have a good branding strategy behind them um but it should they should branding's really important yeah okay so uh, okay so uh, any last advice for kids and parents who are watching this uh, I mean, let kids be kids. Uh, kids don't rush into things. Um, you know, you have an entire lifetime ahead of you to figure out what you want to do. So don't stress uh, and don't put pressure on yourself. Just, you know, live your childhood because the childhood never comes back. 
you know what you know play go play outside i don't know if kids do that anymore are they they always on their devices i guess that's the complaint that i hear and also parents too right they're like uh, oh like my kids always on a device but you're having people over at like a dinner party or whatever you give kids your phone and what what do you expect them to do like they you know even we do that sometimes um so yeah let kids be kids uh let them live their lives don't put too much pressure on them they have a whole lifetime ahead of them to uh, figure out what they want to do all right so netila can i take over from you for a moment because we we probably have about another 10 minutes come on yeah. would you be yeah. all right yeah, yeah so yeah. i think netila has come to the end of his questions but then i need to uh, uh ask few more questions maybe for the benefit of we don't get to catch you all the time so <laughs> might as well uh, get the maximum out of it so sure. the the first question uh, i want to ask is uh, any advice that you want to give uh, the youngsters who are starting businesses in mm-hmm. sri lanka like i'm not talking about the kids but then you know yeah. there's a, there's little hype about entrepreneurship a lot of people want to get it you yeah. with your experience few tips i mean uh, first decide if you are cut out to be an entrepreneur because uh, in Sri Lanka but I see a lot is if there is like a fad or if there is a certain wave people all fall uh, you know people all fall in line with it like it's same with entrepreneurship right like everyone uh, with an instagram page and a t-shirt brand is an entrepreneur that is not what entrepreneurship is like just because you put a you know a logo on a t-shirt and you know two people buy it you can be an entrepreneur well, technically you are but um just figure out if you really have the guts and you know the heart and soul to actually become an entrepreneur because it's not easy like you see you see all the success stories but you don't see you know you, you don't see all the uh, the grit and the grind every day that we go through right so um first decide if you if you're really cut out to be an entrepreneur and uh, yeah also also entrepreneurs who are uh, struggling right now who who are down because their business is because this is a tough time for everyone in the world um things will change uh don't put too much definitely don't put too much pressure on yourself because uh if you're true to what you do and if you're if you're really invested in what you do and if you really love what you do you will try and fail and one day um you are going to succeed so don't to put too much pressure on yourself and also the biggest thing for in sri lanka is right now is an entrepreneur earns money buys a bmw i8 like this these fancy cars and that's that's how entrepreneurship is uh those are the end goals of certain entrepreneurs i want to buy a car that's why i want to be, become an entrepreneur but i don't think that's that's the right way to go but yes you can buy a car but um don't you know don't make a profit and use everything to buy a car then you won't be an entrepreneur anymore after you you know get your car um and there's an 80% lease on it and you put down 20% and that shouldn't be the deciding factor of you know being an entrepreneur or those 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 are good goals to have like having a fancy car is a good goal it's a good motivator but sometimes what happens is when they don't get there they get frustrated they get depressed you know a lot of challenges are are ahead of them and they put too much pressure on their, themselves so yeah give give yourself realistic goals uh bite sized goals uh probably the best way to do it uh, and you know it, it doesn't you can grow a business overnight you can become successful overnight some people do if they're very lucky um but you have to spend a lot of time on your business you have to spend a lot of energy on your business and that's the only sure fire way to succeed yeah come on so some of your advisors we will repurpose this video sure. and then uh, we will have them for the benefit of uh, those uh, you know maybe bite size videos and then we have another question from uh, i think uh, ijaz hi kamaj what has uh, this pandemic and lockdown has uh, taught you uh has it made you change your business plan expansion plan has it had a positive or a negative impact on your business um so overall i would say uh positive impact on the business because e-commerce grew um 
pretty uh, fast or, you know, in, 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 in huge proportions during the pandemic because pe- people started shopping online. So it hasn't done anything bad for us. Um, the only thing is we had to close the retail space down. Uh, we were paying a lease for over six months with, you know, uh, with the store being closed, there was no point. So I decided to close the retail store and take that online as well fully. Uh, we will, at some point, we will open up another retail store for milk, but uh, I don't see it in the foreseeable future why we should do that. Uh, because retails, honestly, believe me, retail is tough, man. It's 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 a really tough business to be in. Um, there's a lot of expenses around retail, um, so we had to close that portion of the business down but we we didn't close it we just took it like fully online and we we created we created this uh online experience for that that business um other than that uh it has been positive uh, sorry amit i i really yeah. forgot the rest of the question can you repeat that for me yeah it's uh basically you has it affected your expansion plans <laughs> so you moved on to e-commerce you said Yes, I moved on to e-commerce for milk. It really ha- because we with milk we didn't want to, you know, we didn't want to open many stores in you know different cities or whatever. That doesn't um, that wasn't that was never that was never our intention or that was never our plan. So expansion plans, no. Uh, what happened? I'll tell you exactly what happened right at the time of lockdown and um, you know when uh, I remember everyone pulled back all their. Facebook and Instagram marketing budgets because they thought this was, you know, it's costing them a lot of money uh, and they need to save money for the future. But I doubled uh, our, our dollars. So I think that's how we, we grew pretty fast within the last five to six months. Uh, I think we grew like 4x over like the last last few months. Uh, that's because uh, definitely a risk to do that. But it's like, you know, it's not a huge proportionate risk because if you if you consider the the dollars that dollar amounts we put in it's it's not doubling uh the ad revenue uh, ad budget is not a super risky move um you can try it for a month and see so i tried it for a month it worked tried it for month two it worked tried it for month three it worked so it kept going on yeah i think even in sri lanka uh, in the retail space they are experiencing yeah. a positive growth on uh, yeah. So you want to also talk about uh, any of your Sri Lankan ventures here? Yeah, this is an opportunity. Yeah, uh, so Daya sauce is a hot sauce uh, that I launched very recently in Sri Lanka. It's pretty much in its infancy. It's a baby still. Launched it a month ago. Uh, I call it the hottest sauce in Sri Lanka. Uh, <laughs> it is. People have told me it is the hottest sauce in Sri Lanka. It's a novelty hot sauce. Uh, which we haven't really seen in Sri Lanka. We've seen hot sauces, but I think it's um, the branding strategy is pretty fire. Uh, excuse my pun. Uh, I would say uh, it's a. I think it's a. It's a little bit of a different product to the the food market in Sri Lanka, and it's 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 going to be a novelty sauce definitely um and we are coming up out out with new flavors every month for the next four months um we have a zombie sauce coming up in january um <laughs> and uh, and yeah i mean i the marketing strategy behind it we uh, i i do this thing called daya show uh which is basically uh, a version of hot ones which is an international show uh for for sri lanka um so the reason I started doing that show was because I wanted to uh, release this sauce at some point, uh, and I had the idea we were uh, we were we were testing out the sauce, we were testing out recipes for it. But I wanted to market it in a little bit of a different way. So I, for the first season, for about ten, twelve episodes, I didn't even mention that there is a sauce releasing. <laughs> so I just wanted the Sri Lankan um, YouTube community to kind of. Um, get what this point is about you know get a feel for what this hot sauce is and make them want to try it but they can't buy it right so for the first season um i didn't even mention like our original sauce and uh, from season two i think it's uh, after about a year when we started season two we released the first flavor in uh, in in november sorry december Uh, uh, yeah yeah, so if somebody wants to uh buy your sauce how can they order now uh they can buy it at diasauce.com 
and it's also available at sarketa.com uh, sarketa is a is one of the biggest uh, organic uh, food distributors and they have their own farms and stuff in sri lanka as well uh, so you can buy it directly at dayasauce.com or you can uh, purchase it at sarketa.com or okay sarketa's website all right so uh uh Nathila, you want to ask anything as the final question because we have maybe two minutes more? Actually, yes. Uh, so I have nothing to ask you. I just want to thank you for all the time you have given us, you know, to uh, come here and uh, help, help me and teach everyone about entrepreneurship and some tips. Yes. Thank you for the time. You're welcome, Nathila. Thank you for having me, Amita and Nathila. Yeah so thank you very much we wish you all the very best uh, in your future endeavors one last question yes i mean uh, uh, i mean you are giving shoes to the west and you are giving us sauce isn't it unfair kolabata kiri apita ka kiri wagedu canada avata kiri apita sauce exactly <laughs> any plans uh no i mean honestly no because we i Uh, earlier when i first started singing it up within like 2 years i tried because the price point it just doesn't make sense uh when it comes there no one's going to pay you know 30 40 000 rupees for a pair of shoes um i don't think we we are uh you know we we are not at that level of consuming branded products at least the mass market um because there's a lot of fakes going around in sri lanka too and that's a hassle of its own to deal with um so financially and uh business wise it's 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 not the right time now yeah. uh, leaving my options open definitely because i think um disposable income in sri lanka is uh low right. in certain c- c- certain groups but i i think i think there should be at at some point we should be able to introduce some kind of thing i was uh, i was working on a app which is pretty similar to wish for fashion uh but it's uh, it's in let's just say it's in development right now but um, we we're, we're working on it but i don't know when it's going to be released um also a uh, lot of uh, you know there's there are shipping issues uh in yeah. sri lanka within sri lanka um with the with the sauce it's like okay like you you get i i experienced that um you know <laughs> you, they promise you two day delivery and it doesn't turn up for 14 days uh yeah i think sri lankan businesses especially the ones that i work with uh i i found a really good good shipping partner very recently uh, i'm still trying them out they look good on paper we will we will see how it goes but if there's anyone who has a korea company shipping company um that specially serves like outstation yeah hit me up put, drop me a message on linkedin or oh, facebook yeah. because i'm always always looking for new options um and if, oh, you know, that's if an you, opportunity if, for businesses yeah, yeah come up is calling from canada guy who's doing it right now <laughs> hey you're on board <laughs> all right uh, come on by the way what's the name of your dog you said uh, his name is roma so i gave him a little bit of a singhala name roma as in you know uh, yeah roma yeah. cooper silva is his full name <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh, give our regards to him yes uh, and then thank you so very much for coming and enlightening us on many areas especially thank you very much for helping nethila because nethila is planning to start a startup next year to teach nice. entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship skills to kids Nice. So we really appreciate and we wish you all the best any support you need to promote your daya sauce we are here and I'm going to order one sample in <laughs> <laughs> Thank you Amit yes 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 we will definitely do a when the new uh, when the new flavor comes out we'll do a giveaway on on your show Yeah okay thank you very much and Thanks, stay guys. safe Have a good one you too bye Yeah thank you and stay safe Bye so much Thank you Bye thank you